is one of two sort of main hubs of business we have. And here on the farm, I can use the four wheel bike very effectively and it cuts down on labour. But over at the Cairngorms, where the main reindeer herd lives, it's all done on foot. You carry all the feed out to the reindeer. And there is no vehicular access at all. I'm Tilly Smith, and we're here at Bolkorak Farm, which is on the Glenlivet Estate. We're a tenant farmer, and our landlords are the Crown Estates. I went to university to do zoology, and as I was coming to the end of my three years, I was sort of scratching my head wondering what I was going to do. And I knew about the reindeer up in the Cairngorms, so I went out to work as a volunteer, my husband now was the keeper. <laughs> I had to marry him to stay. <laughs> so we then had the two children who, who swear they're Scottish and they don't have any English blood in them at all. <laughs> I love being remote. Obviously when the kids were born it was quite nice to know that Inverness wasn't that far away and there's always a helicopter. At Glenmore, where the reindeer centre is, there's a campsite and there's us and there's a few other houses. And I think the day they put in street lighting will be a day to cry because having darkness is so unusual in this country. For me, remoteness is more of a, an economic factor as a farmer because any feed I want to bring in has to come distance. And that is a big problem for a lot of people in the Highlands and Islands. As soon as you say Highlands and Islands, they say, oh, there's a surcharge. You know, so it's a costly exercise to live in the Highlands from that point of view. So the Belt of Galloways are heading away from us at the moment through the field and that always makes me laugh because I always think they look like a moving zebra crossing. <laughs> I'm not feeding the cattle at this time of year, there's absolutely no need. There's plenty of grass for them and as you can see it's quite lush. So the first job of the day is to get the pigs fed and once they're fed you can then go on to do all the other animals. This is the piggies. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift these bags over and give them to the pigs on this side. Ooh, they're quite heavy bags. <laughs> the dark ones are pure wild boar. They're quite angular in shape. They've got very long snouts, they've got small ears, they've got quite razor backs. They're quite hairy. And the big fat sows in front of us are two Tamworth Gloucester Old Spot crosses. No, you're not eating the sour roll. The cow crept up on us. <laughs> they love the sour rolls. <laughs> you're not getting that, Mrs. Uh... My cattle are very tame. All of my moving of them I do with a white bag. So they were actually on the furthest hill over there yesterday and we brought them back down to the farm to eat this grass. So to do that, they follow a white bag and the white bag means food. So whenever they see the white bag, they assume they're going to get fed but it means we don't have to chase them with dogs and things like that. And that is an ethos on this farm, that things follow you, that you don't chase them. So we'll just wander up to the reindeer now. Oh boy. La, la, la. A lot of these males are ones we train to harness at Christmas time. So this is, for us, a slightly alternative source of income, but a very good source of income. And we can do street parades and Santa's grottos and you know, switching on the lights in November and December. So they get a pretty good time with these guys. They just munch around for most of the year and then do a little bit of work at Christmas. The National Park's now been going for 10 years. And I have to confess in that 10 years, I'm not sure how I've benefited from the Cairngorms National Park. And I think Aviemore has benefited to the detriment of the outlying villages, I really do. The National Park area is beautiful and it does need to be managed and it does need to keep a lot of its wildness. It would be a shame if we started 
you know, eating into these areas with urban thoughts. It concerns me because there are potentially some big developments that may take place in the future housing developments and I don't think that's right and proper within a national park. You know, it should be for really protecting what we've got because some of the United Kingdom has got to remain so peaceful. <laughs> more from the Open University. Check out the links on screen now.